All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Andreas Diaz, or my YouTube channel, Andreas the Pop Culture Guy Channel Presents. Uh, this is the uh, third podcast of Andreas the Pop Culture Talk. Uh, this is the TV podcast. So today I have my co host, Becca. Hello. So today we're going to discuss the OA, the uh, TV show uh, created by, you know their names? I, I cannot say. Them. Um, Zal. Uh, that language and uh, Brit Marling. Yes, that's the art. Uh, uh, okay, so the show ran from 2016 to 2019. This is a science fiction slash supernatural fantasy elements kind of show. And uh, yeah, you, Becca, you're the one that got me into the show. So um, jumping into Overall, uh, why you like the show? What's the, uh, what's the, like, or what do you think about the show in general? Um, I mean, I love it. I loved it from the first episode. Um, I think just the atmosphere that that they create is really beautiful. Um, the characters are all fantastic. Um, you kind of from the start you really care about, at least I really cared about all the characters and um, the mystery of it, kind of that, the mysterious atmosphere um, and simultaneous sort of nostalgic effect. Um, the idea of a group of people coming together, wanting to believe in something um, with this mystery backdrop and some really cool sci-fi fantasy elements as well. That's what I love. Some of the things. Right. Hi. Uh, hey. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. I think um, I really like the show for its unique, um, I think it's unique approach of multi dimensions, like, oh, mm -hmm. or simple words, multi, uh, the multiverse idea of it. And so that was the uh, the concept of the show, and uh, we watching it. I was like, we mentioned before recording that I like this much more now. We watching it because do you think seeing it after the second season, like rewatching it after watching the second season, made you like it more? Well, yes, but when I was watching while when I was rewatching it the first season, there were plot points that did set up. The second season mm -hmm. so i let me see, what was the episode i think it was either chapter four away or either yeah chapter four yeah chapter four uh away when um i say homer like does um i say was in the machine that makes him you know do the nde uh and then he goes to this weird place and I didn't realize that place was the hospital that all of them are going to go in the dimension in second season. Mm -hmm. So when I noticed that I was like oh no they did set this up. <laughs> so that made yeah. me more like it. That's one of the other things I love about the show is everything is very careful. Everything has been set up so meticulously. Nothing's an accident. Truly like every detail the creators have put thought into. And I think yes. that's really neat. Yeah. Um, what was it? In chapter five, uh, Paradise, when everyone discovered the movements, uh, mm -hmm. you know, well, of course, towards the end of chapter four, when Perry and Homer, uh, you know, discovered the movements and save, you know, Scott. Um, chapter five, you see, um, you know, chapter five, um, Perry, well, the OA explained to the kids, well, her group, uh, the rules that set up, and then she mentioned one plot line that I didn't notice that kind of helps in six in the second season about um, Homer not remembering. You know, you remember in se season two, he wasn't there with the others when they went to their new bodies in the new dimension. And so it explained that if um, I shouldn't have written the the rules, but like you say, like if you travel to dimension you're gonna forget 
from your previous experience. And so yeah. that was set up in this season. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, I really like the show. Um, I think in general, I like it because the characters, I really like the production value of this show. It was very gorgeous. Feels like a movie in a lot of ways. Um, and uh, yeah, it has very, very interesting stuff to talk about, you know, the dimensions and the you know, religion and spiritual ways. And um, yeah, and, and you're right about, you know, believing in something which is like very unique with the characters specifically. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's get into like the best aspects, like the best thing about the show for you. Um, like a very specific thing in the show you like. It makes mm -hmm. it the best. Specific as in? Um, I, I guess like characters or like something in the show does you haven't seen in the show, like any shows. It's um, a good question. I feel like there's sort of so many. Yeah. Thanks. Um, uh, there's, a, I mean, there's a lot to kind of untangle in the show, but um, I guess just sort of the surreal atmosphere. Um, like, I don't think I've ever seen a show with that created an atmosphere, established an atmosphere like that so effectively and so quickly. Um, like from the first, I mean, I was drawn in from the first few minutes, even like the first scene where it's um, this kind of unusual perspective of like that, um, a kid filming from his iPhone yeah. as the OA is like jumping, jumping off the bridge. bridge. That's, um, it was a really interesting way to start um show. interesting perspective and i think that kind of continues throughout the show um different sort of just unique surprising elements that add to an overall atmosphere mm. i don't know if that's as specific as you wanted but no, I think, <laughs> it's um no, kind of i think that's very good um that's what you know best aspect of the show is um perspective and stuff like that um i i, I should go uh best part about this show is the handle of characters and how they correlate each other and how how Perry affects them very well and like yeah and then also like Perry uh, you know the OA herself is a very interesting character and I you know she, she's very interesting and she's like very easy to listen to um so um uh, yeah, I agree. Those are, oh, sorry, uh, go ahead. No, I agree with all that too. I think that's the other, like, my, I would say that's my other favorite okay. thing. I guess. Yeah, um, I, I do have one plot with one character. Uh, for, uh, I don't know, I, I, I have mixed feelings for this character, um, but I will mention the worst aspect of the, sh of, of the show. Um, I think that the show does a really good job telling these characters, they're not stereotypical. I feel for each character. Um, I guess I don't want to get into like best characters in the show, but uh, half of them are, are very interesting and very good. Um, I also mentioned production, design, and sound, and, and the music. I, I think best mm. part of music. I really like the music of the show. It really draws you in uh, with uh, the OAS universe and uh, using the uh, was it the violin. As a like a motif with Perry's, you know, because she's from Russia and she played the violin with her father, you know, for her father when he has high. Um, the music really does a good job, and the soundtrack is also good. Uh, probably my favorite was in Chapter Four, uh, Away, and there's a song I don't know it's called Crazy on You, something like that. When, like, when they re resurrect Scott. And the sun just kicks in, and then you see uh, Hap, of course, uh, played by Jace, uh, Jason Isaacs. He comes down, and he's just shocked, and is like, oh my god, it's real. Uh, and that's that 
that chapter made me love this, like, my reminding me of the show why I love it. So it's very good. Um, okay. I will say, um, what's the worst aspect of the show for you? Like, is there any nitpicks or anything? I mean, for me, personally, I I love it. But, I mean, it's the one thing I would say is it's not for everyone. Like, it's a very... I wouldn't just show it to, like, any of my friends necessarily. Like, I, I would... It's not necessarily accessible. Um, it's very abstract in a lot of ways. Um, and it's kind of, especially the first season is kind of a slow burn. And that's just, you know, that's not everyone's taste and that's fine. I think for the, the people that love the show, it's extremely effective. Um, but in order for that to be the case, you have to compromise a little bit of, um, I guess you just, you can't really please everyone um, when you're making something that's so pointed, mm. but and yeah. Yeah, okay, I think, yeah, there's a lot of things I do want to answer. Uh, I guess, obviously, you the, you think the show is accessible for everyone? Like, No, I think it's not. That's okay. what I'm saying. I think it's, that's kind of the downside is it's definitely not accessible for everyone. It's not for everyone. Um, Right, right. Not everyone will get it and not everyone will like it because it's, it is very unique and it's very unusual. And some people will find certain aspects of it ridiculous sort of in how kind of abstract they are. For me personally, all of those things work really well, but I can understand that it's not going to be for everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had the same thing as well. Like, just thinking, like, is this, like, a successful show? Because I like it. Because I like the, the unique, sci like, sci-fi things they do with, you know, going to, like, multi like discussing the multiverse. and how yeah. I like how, like, it's very interesting how they're using, like, um, a definite experience. That's, that's what they call it. Uh, or what is it? Near-death uh, experiences? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Near, Near-death experience. And use that as... That's like a a, a teleportation uh, device to go to one dimension to another. That's very interesting, um, which I can get that's like kind of weird, but then it kind of makes sense because you're going to the afterlife, and that that's like a very cool way to rope that into a science fiction idea. So that's one of the things I like that. Um, yeah. Um, another thing, this show, like specifically in the first season, I know is I mean, I. It's in, I noticed this in Wikipedia, a lot of people compare this to Stranger Things. And I want to ask you about that. Do you think this is compared to Stranger Things? And also, like, have you seen the show? <laughs> I haven't seen, so I've seen a couple episodes of Stranger Things. I haven't seen the whole show. Um, right, right. To be honest, for me, Stranger Things didn't grab me the same way that the OA did. Um, however, I can, I do see the overlap. Like, I see where people would see that overlap in kind of there's a mystery there's a group of kids that are kind of trying to solve this mystery so like i can definitely see some similarities but i think the tone um is very different i think stranger things is more um i think it does have more widespread appeal yeah um, um than the oa it's a little bit less abstract i think um, from what I have seen of it, and it, um, I think it's going for something a little different. I think that there's um, the OA. One I know one of the things that Stranger Things is famous for is um, kind of incorporating these elements of like '80s horror and um, that kind of thing, and that's not really like a, a theme in the OA. No. Um, they do, like, they do, they also do dimensions as well. Mm -hmm. Not like what they're doing, like, teleporting, like, they go to another alternate dimension that mm -hmm. have these creatures and where it's very straightforward and, like, kind of dry. And then also they have other, like, it has a very Stephen King vibe where you're yeah. talking only dimensions, you know, like the mist, 
um, you know, novel and the movie, the 2007 one, and like a little bit of Carrie with, you know, Eleven with the telepathic powers, where you're going to get each, you're getting every aspect of a sci-fi 80s slash horror aspect. Um, yeah, and I agree with you. Um, I seen the show. I seen three seasons. I love the show as well. I got into it after I saw It Chapter One, of course. Um, and obviously, there's one actor from Stranger Things that's in that movie. Um, plays uh, Richie, uh, the main, the other main character in that movie. Um, yeah, um, this I never like. It's kind of like I never really see the comparisons. At all, but before you you mentioned about you know the group you know with Buck, BBA, Sc- uh, uh, Steve. Oh my God, I'm gonna say Scott, and then uh, Alfonso. Like, uh, yeah, you're right about that. That's the one element that is similar to Stranger Things, but it doesn't. Like, uh, of course, um, I want. I probably want to get it into. I guess the words aspect. Do you think the show is their typical sometimes with its characters? Do you think that's where people just your way yeah do you do you have ever sense there's a stereotypicalness with some characters there, for me there's only one character that i think is stereotypical but uh but the others i i have no problem with that uh the one character i have no problem with is um buck i think she um is a very fascinating character they handle he. the transgender very well he. Um, oh he uh um mich- uh yeah, uh, correct me uh, about yeah. that subject. Um, but I, I want to say overall, Buck is a very great character that is handled very well, and they handled the transgender issue and, and identity and the themes of it very well in the show, and I like it. So um, yeah, you know, and um, Ian Alexander does a fantastic job. Yes, he does. So. Really good. Great. Um, yeah, I think that's a great. I yeah, I really think. I'm trying to think. Um, I would say in terms of the main characters, I think they're all pretty unique characters. I don't think any of them like rely that heavily on um, stereotypes. Is there? I know you said there was like one character that you think does. Um, Not stereotypical, I guess. Um, when I mean one character, I don't care like i think it's just the way they have the show like like why i need this to learn about this character where the others i can get sense of it got it i want to say um, worse characters in the show um uh, if there's worse characters for you um but yeah um yeah and then uh, i'll give a hint it's, it's one character in the group and so but it's not the one uh it's just one character i'm like uh, jesse uh no, no, that Jesse's just is fine. Um, okay. this one character, like I was like, really, and then towards the end, I was like, really, like, like, I just, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah. Um, and then uh, uh, quickly to wrap up the Strange Things comparison because mm-hmm. um, this show came out like specifically the first season came out in um, the, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. It came out in December. And then Strangers came out in July. So I thought, I, I don't know, I saw it came out either July, but it, it came out the same year. So Strangers. Oh, okay. so I'm, I'm done with that. I thought it came out the same month, but no. It came out. I'm just going to plug this in very quickly. One second. Yeah. Sure. So I guess we talked about worst aspects of the show uh, as possible we can do. Uh, let's get into best characters of the show. So do you have a favorite character of the show, Becca? I'm curious. I love the OA. I think she's a great character. Um, she's great. Yeah. I mean, I like, I do love most of the characters in the show. So it's, but yeah, I do love the OA. I think um, Brent Marling's portrayal is phenomenal and I think she's a unique character I think you see you really see her arc um in terms of development 
um, and the way she tells her story, the way she acts as a almost magical force binding um, the others together, but yet she still feels like a person. It's hard to do that, I think. Yes, it's very true. I'm re-watching this, I was like very impressed. Like, you know, especially the high, like this show does a very good job of handling the high concept ideas mm -hmm. of, you know, multiple dimensions and like, you know, also discussing about near death experience, like, they tackle a lot of like high constant ideas of sci-fi or like something that is very label that could happen like you know disappearance you know uh kidnapping and like it's like very just, heavy stuff like psychological as well like trauma yeah um is handled well and um aside from the oa also just from a psychological perspective like i think steve's character is interesting yeah, Steve. Um, Steve is very good. Also, just commentary on um, modern day society. Um, there's a scene I love in um, at the beginning of the show, um, in the first episode with uh, Steve, and um, when the OA goes to uh, pretend to be Steve's mother. Oh, yes, which is, by the way, the best scene and like one of the most like, <laughs> like the most motivated, like speeches I heard that was yep. so real. Uh, so I good. love that scene. Oh, and best best for BBA as well. Um, yes, I, BBA oh, is also a great character. Yeah, um, yeah. I can deal with the scene. Uh, I I think you were saying something though. Oh, um, just the the comp that was like a good example of commentary on society and on I think the need for empathy mm -hmm. like just the whole show <laughs> paints the picture of the fact that we live in the world that really lacks the empathy that we need in order to kind of heal ourselves and others um yeah and I think the show port does a good job of portraying the strength in in empathy yeah and well and and also like appreciating what you have right because the oa like uh, throughout the season she's telling these stories and then especially in i think was in in episode seven when perry is getting a drive with um alfonso you know he talked about you know you tell us so much of the story you know and you know you trust us and then but you know that's your parents, right? Because Perry hasn't told them about the experience. And, you know, and, and so far he's, she's been very disconnected with them entirely. But, but you see that with throughout the flashbacks and, and like her, especially, she's been always been the odd one out because of how her abilities are, you know, and how, you know, the parents are just trying their best to make her better, you know, with the, you know, the, the nosebleed and, is a medication and stuff like that um and it's like you know and you know especially because the way he affects the mom and you know how uh especially towards the end she mentioned how she wanted a daughter and you know she really loved her and you know because she was blind but then when she went away she just couldn't take it you know and you know she felt very disappointed but especially because the note she left for her parents you know especially the father which i i want to say that the cast here are pretty amazing. I mean, um, my favorite character has to be Perry's father. I want to give a shout out to uh, Scott Wilson, Abel uh, Johnson. That's the character's name. Uh, I think he's been, he's the best character I really love. Of course, I uh, Scott is also in the Walking Dead folks. He play um, uh, uh, Marshall, uh, uh, Maggie's father, if, you know him from The Walking Dead. He's such an incredible actor. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, 2018. Uh, yes, October 6, 2016, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And uh, he had a cameo in second season, which I was very happy of. And I was like, uh, we mm -hmm. truly missed, uh, we truly lost another great actor uh, in the industry. And I felt his character was really great. He was very supportive of Perry. 
he mm-hmm. like did the best like he had the interest of Harry's you know well-being and I think he did that very well where the mom as usual she you know every mom you know you know tries their best but you know not doing away I think worse wasn't the instance for that character I felt like Abel was able to give Perry the love and, and at least support she needs and I and like especially I think the scene in either chapter four I think it was around four either four to six uh you see a scene when they're driving to the you know the FBI uh therapist um and uh you know she lays down to her head to his you know shoulders great scene it just shows that she you know felt more comfortable with him over the mom so I want to give a shout out to that for the best character there and then Steve as well he's second after um evil uh very instant character I like how his character grows and acts more mature uh and you totally see that throughout the season especially when we get to episode seven when he was going to get into the boot camp and you know especially when the whole like him punching the kid's throat comes up again in episode seven and how he say he will talk to it instead of just fighting for it which is very cool yeah so so i think his character was well handled in this season uh, uh, any other characters we should mention um oh uh bba before, uh, i think bba uh well yeah bba is great i go on go on uh no uh i mean uh, let's get to bba i i really like bba as well she's i, I would play uh abel if in terms of the main group who is my favorite is definitely bba i think i feel sorry for the character i love her uh obviously she's one of those uh, actress that's from The Office, but also she is one of my favorite characters in Inside Out. Of course, she voiced uh, Sadness, which is totally great, and uh, I think she's great in the show. I feel like, you know, especially her brother's story is very mm-hmm. relatable, and uh, I, I think she is very likable. She's one of those characters that I, I can, like, can understand. She's another character, like, you do want to feel empathy. You mentioned how the theme empathy is with each character for their different issues where she's you know getting older she's you know lost a brother twin brother as she mentioned in the show and uh like you're just like her just questioning like what what i'm doing right now it's like is it worth it and and so when she meets you know the oa she starts to be more confident and she connects to more with the kids you know like how teachers you see that teacher connecting the students thing but she's doing more better because she's with these other kids that need help. And like you saw how the, you know, BBA helped Steve to go to the, what, what is it? The detention, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, where she meets her girlfriend. Uh, who's the girlfriend's name? I, um, uh, Kate, that's her name. Katie, uh, I yeah. think that's her name. Um, so, like I, I totally forgot Katie was introduced in the first season. She was, yeah. Like, season two a lot, and I was like, "Oh yeah, she's in this." And she, it was funny in episode three when. Oh, we, uh, yeah. Angie, I think. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's Angie. Yes, correct. Thank you. Um. Uh. Yeah, and Angie is, is a very instant character, and like, like, I, I, this show. Uh, and, I want to say, like, you know, going back, best aspect of the show, this show did a really good job of setting up things, and, like, uh, of course, apparently they have a five-part plan of this show. Mm-hmm. It's disappointing. Um, um, and just while you're talking about BB Ed and Steve, I just want to bring up um, the inter- the way that they kind of parallel B- uh, Steve with BBA's brother when he puts on the the, the snow uh, jumpsuit. Yeah, um, and I think they kind of, it's like she sees her brother in Steve. Yeah. Um, um, and they kind of bring themes of that back. Um, and I think that's like what connected the, like the OA kind of planted the seeds for turning 
the turning BBA who had kind of just become bitter at a certain point and then reminding her this is like why you became a teacher in the first place and there are people like your brother that um need help like maybe if they had someone like maybe if he had someone like you as a role model things would have ended differently yeah it's very true um yeah it's very industry i think like I think BBA has that way, though, like, she's the more mother of her, like, she's second command after the OA in terms of mother figure. Mm -hmm. So I can view that because I put Steve connected to OA as he, he is the homer of that group. Yeah. Especially because how he's the one that's running towards, like, towards the end of the series, you see them try to follow the, the ambulance after she gets shot by the shooter. And he runs, like he still continues to run. And so it shows this parallel that he's the homer of that group. And he has the more connected with um, with Perry because Perry is the, the mother figure for Steve. And she's the one that gives Steve a direction that he didn't have before. And so I put that there where BBA is just, I say she's second command in terms of the group and a lot of, in his ways as he's becoming like an actual teacher to them, you know, uh, reminding them, you know, a certain time that Perry needs to go back or, you know, you know, saving not only Steve, but also connected to Jesse as well, another character that's also in the stream. Um, uh, because they have this with, sorry, uh, alarm. <laughs> um, uh, I say like, uh, you have that, especially with, uh, Buck and Alfonso, how those two characters connected, how mm -hmm. they're very, like, like uh, I didn't notice that, but, like, they're very, you know, high accomplished, but, like, they have personal, um, you know, uh, you know, goings in their life. They have very there. different, like, families, and for one thing, like, Alfonso or French, um, they, like, his parents are just absent like his mother's like completely he's basically taking care of his mother um yeah meanwhile um buck has these kind of overbearing parents um that yeah. refuse that intentionally you know misgender him um the father does that uh, like yeah which is crazy Cause I, cause he's the one that say, like, I, did he say like a comment like, oh, you should be called he or no, 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 uh, she. Well, they just would um call him Michelle. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, which comes up in the you know second season, obviously, but um, yeah, you know they'll they they refuse to like see him for who he is and want him to be this perfect child daughter really um. And, uh, you know, but he kind of looked up to French, I think, for his, his accomplishments. And, um, yeah, so they really connect, like you said, both being kind of, like, high achieving, um, but with, like, you know, slightly different <laughs> backgrounds yeah. behind that. Yeah, and, and, you know, and Buck is the one that gets Afonso to be still part of the group. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, obviously the storyline of him trying to not get in, in trouble and weird because, you know, his, um, you know, career counselors told him that. And so, and so like, that's going on. So, but he's drawn to that. And, you know, as we mentioned before, empathy, Perry is the money figure that, you know, Alfonso really wants. You know, of course, he still loves his, her, his mom, but he doesn't see the mom who's like, like his, his mom is completely broke, broken as a person. And, you know, it just doesn't give the love he, that he needs after just working so hard to, you know, to divide the family. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's uh, one thing that's uh, very interesting. And it just goes back about empathy. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I guess let's kind of get into Jess, uh, Jesse. I, I like Jesse as a character. He's very industry. Um, we, we, what, what's your thoughts on Jesse as a character? 
I think he's a good character. I think he doesn't get a lot of character development until the second season. I think, like, he's kind of the one character who's a little bit neglected in season one, but they definitely make up for that in season two. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought about it. Yeah, I was re-watching this. I was like, um, now you mentioned, yeah, I was watching it, and it was like, yeah, he hasn't really been put together with some of the characters. I think him, I think if you put him with the BBA, I think they can be more relatable. Yeah. Had something because we have that what was it in episode two when they get done with the first meeting. You know, he goes back home, he talks to his sister, I guess. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, and of course she's you know smoking you know, marijuana and drugs, etc. And he talks about you know angels and about his dad, and then of course, or his mom. Sorry, uh, his mom, you know, who unfortunately you know, committed suicide, uh, which that foreshadows, uh, you know, someone, a certain death going to happen in season two, which is very shocking. I didn't realize that that's like a foreshadow of who's, that he probably going to commit suicide, which he, he does in season two. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, and I love that scene because I noticed they mentioned Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick. So that was uh, the one part I, I liked Jesse. So Jesse's very cool. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, they didn't give much about Jesse besides just token moments, really. Um, you know, he has that woman with BBA when they're trying to clean up uh, her brother's um, rehab, uh, staying home. Um, you know, and then, you know, he starts talking to her and then kind of understands, you know, what she's going through. And so, um, but uh, yeah, really, just just token moments, really. Um, nothing too, like, apparent, like, not too character development for that character, so, unfortunately. Um, but I say my third character, besides Abel and BBA, let's talk about the, the other character, Hunter Hep. Of course, the main antagonist of the show. I want to talk more about that character. Tell me what do you think about that main antagonist of Hep. Yeah, I mean, so I, he's obviously a very a well-written villain. Um, he has, like, a very clear motivation, and he's not just, like, evil for the sake of it. Um, like, you understand what he's trying to achieve. But, um, yeah. I mean, I... I feel like, at least for me, watching it, you can't help but hate him. He's, which is what you're supposed to. I mean, so the great character, despicable person. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think was it episode two is where I got really hooked in the show, and mm-hmm. the best part of him is he has style and like <laughs> gravitas. <laughs> The villain, and you know what's so funny about it? You know, in episode two, when he takes Perry to his, you know, little cabin, and you know, obviously the basement downstairs. You know, she's trying to call, you know, his parents, you know, for the the telephone, right? And he puts the song from Jim Cross, one of my favorite artists. Of course, he does "Time in the Bottle." Yes, I was like, when I was watching, I was like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> it was so like meta metaphorically and it was just oh my god a great way for me to get into that show and <laughs> that episode two is the great episode well you like Hap's taste in music so yeah, that's yeah. Nice yeah. well i mean besides i'm not i don't care about his that the rock <laughs> you know thing to you know cover their voices whatever but like it's just funny how you use operator and like you don't understand the context of that song because it foreshadows how like Perry not calling her, you know, trying to call her parents, but then unfortunately couldn't do it. Well, um, yeah, Hep is a very interesting character. I like him too. Um, he's a very fascinating foil for the OA, and they yeah, just like it's very interesting how you know he's like like I. It's kind of interesting how he find the 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 four main characters from their accent, but you find Perry accidental and then he's like he fall in love with her and so mm-hmm. which adds another dimension to these their to their pairing and so it's very interesting um yeah other things that 
like it's interesting but have like it, it's interesting how he handles death as well like he goes to these extreme measures of like just trying to keep this work you know tightly secret like it was interesting how <laughs> oh sorry no 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 i just think one of the most as, as another thing in terms of psychologically interesting characters and, and dynamics is the way that he perceives like he wants to keep insisting that um the OA like that she's his partner like talking about it like she's his partner and she's a captive yes. Yes. <laughs> um no. but like that's how he's in his mind like that's how he sees it because he's deluded himself into believing that she you know is invested in him and his work in the way that he wants her to be yeah very interesting like like um what the what was the word for him like authority complex you know the way how he controls people you know especially those five characters um yeah, like it was, you, you had a good point, like bringing up about him saying a partner, and it's very interesting. It's like it's contradicting because you're forced here to live in the basement. And, and honestly, you know, the way Perry handles stuff is a lot more efficient than just getting stuff done quickly, you know. I mean, she's the one, like, she literally helps all of them to find the movements, knowing what half is doing to them and so like like she was really the leader you know where homer is like second command um yeah he yeah hep is very interesting and uh you know obviously he's great in season two and you know um very interesting. um i guess what we need to get into the uh, of course the oa's original group of course homer scott rachel and uh Ren renea uh, Ren yeah thank you can we talk for a second about sharon van Etten? Uh, sure. Uh, she pl uh, plays Rachel and is also, oh, yes. um, she's also a singer in, you know, she plays a, Rachel as a character, as a singer, and her voice is the same way that Prairie um, has the kind of supernatural ability to play violin um, after having her ND, then Rachel has this amazing voice, and likewise her, um, the actress, Sharon Bennett, that plays her is, um, she's a singer and um all kind of alternative singer and very good um very good music in general so it's great kind of getting her getting to hear her sing on the show as well yes uh rachel is a good character i like her um and, and you know speaking of see too it was very ironic when she goes to the dimension mm -hmm. of where everyone she doesn't sing and she has no voice, which is very poetic. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's a statement for sure. And yeah. I think, like you said earlier, kind of mentioning um, parallels between the character, between the original group and the um, Crestwood group. Um, and there's definitely parallels, some parallels between Rachel and BBA. Yes, um, with see. they both have like with the brother and um with <gasps> yes that's right good point yeah there's exactly. a scene with the red that red bike as well where buck um drives past the red bike that's a separate thing but um, yeah now, think about that. yeah the red backpack again sorry yeah um, um Sorry, I'm uh, sorry, Nate, for a book. No, no, that's all. That was, the, that was the main thing that I had to say about on that topic. <laughs> oh, so do you think it's good you mentioned that group and apparently into, you know, the, the, the what, what was it? The first, the, the town they live in? Um, uh, Crestwood. Yeah, Crestwood group. So apparently them, I mentioned Steve is the Homer of that group. So Steve is Homer. And then, yes, I agree with you, Rachel is BB-8. So BB-8 is Rachel. And then, Jesse is Scott, so, but in interesting ways, because, because I, I, I can't really connect him to either um, Buck or Afonso, if, correct me if you think so, but I think. I, yeah, um, 
the only thing I would say is they kind of make it unclear in terms of like Homer because then you also have the scene where French sees Homer in the mirror. Oh, yes. Um, so there's sort of, I know some like theories, different theories about that, mm -hmm. whether that was just kind of an illusion and like the implicate, what the implications of that are, I guess. I, it's, it's kind of like a psychological breaking for each character after this, yeah. after just finishing the story. I don't think you should read too much on it. It's just that we're, I say, he's reflecting on that this is all fake. Yeah. After finding those books in season eight, uh, episode eight in season one. And which is kind of ridiculous, I mean, honestly, but whatever. Um, <laughs> like, like, I mean, like, you think it's like, oh, like, she wants to read how she can do this, do that by reading books. It doesn't mean, like they're she's taking these books and making the story like in the usual socks but you know you look at the board and like okay make, let me make my story up and all the stuff that's in the background of this board in the usual socks with movie sorry spoilers in that movie but like i um yeah i i just like he's just thinking like i say conveniently how she tells the story like you know because homer you know crack his head when he's in the cuba but you know where you know, Afonso got a fight with Steven, that's how he got his cut in the, fore, in the forehead. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's not, like, it's just convenient. I just think he just think he's overthinking too much. Yeah. Um, that's, Do you think he, like, in some way, sees himself as Homer in a certain sense? Uh, I don't I, know. I, I, I probably have to disagree with that. <laughs> but, but, I mean, hey, we... We can agree and disagree. Um, I can see what you're saying. Yeah, like he, I think, I will want to get into like a split that I think Alfonso and Steve represent the different personalities of Homer, right? That yeah. I, can, I can definitely agree with where Homer, Steve, right? Steve is like the, the leader of the group. He's the one that like yeah. takes charge. And then, and you totally see that with Steve's personality after getting into the OA and like he starts to be true more. The one that believes the most fiercely in her as well. They both have that role. Exactly. That's why I put him more in Homer. Um, I'm trying to think in terms of Fonso, I think he's like the the more vulnerable and like how you say it, like family man Homer. Like the stuff we get Homer, how he's a father and like Yeah and you know he's very vulnerable and like he can't like like he's similar to that so he's like the more vulnerable he's like the personal side of homer uh, yeah. fun. and so he really goes to that direction but i i guess i will retract my my saying of jesse to scott i think i will say afonso is more like scott where mm -hmm. he is hesitant to get into this part that's how scott that's true. That's how Scott was before he gets his another near death experience, and then he he got saved by Homer and um, Perry, and yeah, so forth. And so I feel like he's more of Scott, um, because yeah, there's five characters, and then there's also some parallels with I know we said BBA and Rachel, but then there's also some parallels to Buck and Rachel that they both have. They can both they both have beautiful voices yes um yeah and um he the the thing with him driving by that red the red backpack um as well and also in the beginning of uh, spoiler for the second season but um the fact that buck is the one that hears rachel's voice yes that's very true that's very true. Yes, that's very true. Um, well, yes, when we, when, when we'll talk about that a lot, but just to yeah, kind yeah. Of I, I, I should like, I, I should, um, we should iterate for the audience that's listening to the podcast. Like, it's really hard to talk to, talk about season one because this really affects season two. And so, <laughs> 
and especially I mentioned earlier to Becca in, in this conversation that um, I like the season more because I picked up the specific points they were setting out for season two. And that made me like this season a lot more because I didn't rewatch season one when season two was coming out in March last year. So, and they had recaps, of course, but I didn't realize they did set up stuff in season two. And so I liked that more. Like I mentioned before, we got the dimension that Homer went to. That's the place they were going to go to at, in season two. And that's the main setting for them. Yeah. And then um, what was it? The, and then also setting up how Polly Homer will be the one that will forget, will be forgotten when he travels with them because of Perry not there. And mm -hmm. that's major plot point. And I think in general, one thing to say about the show is that you can watch it. You can watch it a lot of times and pick up something new every time you watch it, which is another cool aspect of the show. Yes, um, I totally got that for, for me. Yeah, I, I did that. Um, I want to mention something that I didn't pick up was the shooter for season one. Of course, there's a kid that is a shooter, comes to school, mm -hmm. and that's how they start doing their movements, and that's how Perry travels to mention, and that's her pre Contif, uh dream, her new mm -hmm. dream that she's pre-conting because of that moment. I didn't realize they said that up early. I think it was in episode three or four, you hear a news uh, outlet in BBA's, uh, BBA's home, you hear something about a mole shootout. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize they set up that early. And then I didn't, when we get to it, I was like, oh my God, this is totally fine. They set this up early. So that was such a big setup, like a big yeah, show that's going to happen. I was like, oh, wow, they did this. Um, there was something else they set up like <laughs> for season two. I was like, um, oh, and I, I guess they, I was very clear on what they were doing. I thought they were talking about the afterlife. For, like initially, the first season, I thought they were, going to, they were talking about like the afterlife, how you could travel there and the dimensions. But I didn't realize they were talking in general another dimension in reality to another world in the dimensions. So I didn't realize that they're just using the near death experience as a travel mechanism, like, you know, in time travel stuff, you have a time machine, stuff like that. They use the near death experience as a way to can travel to different realities. And so it's very interesting. So I appreciate more of the rules they were setting up of season one and yeah. how it actually makes sense in season two does um but yeah uh going back to you know the characters um then we get so we talked about rachel scott uh you know on paralleling the groups so like we think about the the fifth member we got um uh, renea yeah uh renata she's an interesting character um she's obviously kind of apart from the others like she's um resent obviously resentful of homer from the beginning since he was instrumental in getting her wrapping her there yeah um oh. and yeah so from the beginning she's kind of set up and then hap also uses that to p try to divide um prairie and homer so i mean her it's interesting it creates another dynamic when she comes because she's divided um both she's divided from them and she creates a divide between them or at least that's what Hap tried to do by bringing her but in the end she's still comes together with them so it's not really successful but um in that one episode it's like um, in chapter five, um, uh, da, 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 uh, what was, was going to say, um, yeah, chapter five is where Scott gets his near death experience again, and, um, she's more connected to Jess, actually, mm. yeah, right, right, Jess, you know, despite him being part of that group, he's the, the outlier of that group as well, you know, he, you know, he connects to the group as well, but, like, he doesn't have like he doesn't have personal like he doesn't connect with the other group of members of of the prayer um 
um, uh, you know, the, the OA's new group, where same thing with Renea, where she's a new person in that group, and you know, and of course she start and just like this, she go tax along, but like she doesn't get, yeah. you know, and both of them don't get character development. They're just like the ends of the means for the plot, you know, where Renea is that for season one, and then Jess is that specifically in season two. Yeah. And they don't get character development, so yeah. So those those two are similar. Um, who else? Um, oh, I guess um, there's a character that was prior to Renea. There, uh, you know, the character that unfortunately died. Autumn. Huh. Autumn. Autumn. Uh, the one yeah. that died. Yeah, yeah. When we get to, I think episode three, when. Uh, you know, Hep had the the electric, the electric um, uh, food that you know what Perry was trying to get him to sleep, but fortunately fell. So she made, that, that's the woman. In the bathtub. That? Yeah. Yeah, Autumn. Yeah, Autumn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They Thank said you. they called her because she came in Autumn or something, I believe. Oh. Um, though you don't. Yeah, it's kind of a mysterious character. You don't really find out much about her, other than that. Um. Very interesting. Seems like she had a connection with Rachel. Rachel, yeah. the one who's the most affected by that death. And she's found. And I know I've read some, like, just because obviously there are so many theories <laughs> about the OA. Um, yeah. <laughs> but keeps. I know there were some theories that she was actually like a, a baby. What? <laughs> That was something that I read. Um, I I cannot see that. I, well, well, I mean, I, I was like, no, she's a grown adult. How you can say she's a baby? I guess. Well, you don't know. We don't. No one necessarily knows. Yeah, I, she was pretty show old. Body. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I I could say she's like Angela when we get to her in season two. Mm. be more like that like um was it like rachel is bba yeah i like or she could be more like jesse how her death affects a couple of people and you know but that's true well, i mean i'm good i'm just just trying to get some ideas for that character um i guess um like uh i guess you have any instrument like theories ideas that you know the fan community came up with season one like could you can discuss that a little bit more oh, it... i mean there are a lot of there are a lot of them of course it's hard to talk about that now with season two because certain things oh, have yeah. been confirmed or denied um that's true in season that were originally theories for season one but um not so much a theory but i think um I remember one that I read that was interesting about um, kind of like biblical themes mm. in, and the sort of like the story of um, like Adam and Eve yes. in a sense uh, and like connections with that and then sort of to the tree of knowledge, which I think kind of comes in more in the second season as well with the tree. Um, yeah. But um It's, um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of theories, but I think it is hard to talk about some of the season one theories now since they were kind of proven yeah. or not, or disproven in a lot of ways in season two. So I think once we talk about season two, we can probably talk more about theories that we'll never know if they hopefully not, well, hopefully we'll know someday. Hopefully they get, are able to continue the show, but. Yes, hopefully for a movie. That's the best way I can take it, you know. Yeah, me too. But, uh, oh dear. Well, we'll discuss that more in season two. Um, okay, I think we can go into the worst characters in this show. Am I curious? I mean, let's be honest, people. Everyone in this show is great. Um, I'm just saying, when I say worst characters in the show, I'm saying we're just nitpicking on the characters that didn't get character development, characters that I'm like okay but I don't like this direction or like I don't get 
yeah. initially thought, you know. So let's, I have my my main character. Let's want, I want to get out of Jesse. Like that's the one character I discovered that okay, you're right, Becca. That like, in season one again, if yeah. we're solely talking about season one, he yeah, didn't yeah. have a lot of development. Yeah, but I mean, Jesse is the one character I can label as the most underdeveloped character. Um, we couldn't have done more with the character, as I mentioned before. He has token moments. But that's not enough to make me like the character. Um, but what I like the character. I don't hate him. Um, but I mean, that's unfortunate. But he gets better material in season two. And yeah. so, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Like you said, and same thing with Renata, I would say. Yes, that's true. Um, yes, she has more interesting things in season two. Um, I need to rewatch season two. Um, I remember. <laughs> <my guess. laughs> Yeah, um, um, but the one character I have, so that's not my main character. So my main character that I wanted to discuss, the one character I feel like I, I'm not really, I don't care, I don't, like, I, it'll be a, I guess it would be a constant social decision, but I gotta say, I don't, I think the worst character, the big character I have is Alfonso. I just, I, I don't know, I'm frustrated with this character. And, <laughs> And then I, I didn't realize it was in episode five or six when he goes to that like scholarship dinner. Like, I didn't even realize his mom is French. I was like, what? Oh, okay. Because I had to put, um, I put the, what was it, subtitles to hear very interesting like, um, sayings of like interesting, interesting things that the characters were saying. Yeah. She mentioned, oh, I was in Paris. I came here. Like, like I was like, oh, so, oh, you are a French person. Oh, okay. Um, I found so. I get frustrated with this character a couple times. I, from episode, I guess episode three. To, six, where I really like the character and he becomes part of the, yeah. From episode three to eight, I connected with the character. But. He gets, you know, into that paranoia idea, like, that's not real. Um, and then also, like, you're adding too much drama of this character. You know, he's a, you know, he used drugs to you know, keep his mind clear. You know, he's his family. And then into season two, we discover he is gay. I'm like, I don't know. I feel like they don't have a handle with Franco, or it's just, just me. Uh, Becca, tell me. Like, mm -hmm. you think he's the, the one character they don't have a grasp with, or you can just... Yeah, I mean, I can understand what you're saying. I think his character development isn't as straightforward as some of the other characters, but I personally still, like, I still liked him as a character. I didn't necessarily have a problem with any of that. Um, yeah. Especially in um, season one, I thought the drug thing was, I mean... It was kind of understandable. Um, I think it made sense given the stress he was under. I think I thought it was realistic. And I, it also was a key tying point because that was how he um, and Buck knew Steve. And the, like they weren't in the same social circles. They all met in that house basically buying drugs. And yeah. that was when um, the OA came into the house looking to borrow someone's Wi-Fi. Um, as well so that kind of uh in some ways was what how they all ended up together in a, in a certain sense so right. but i i do see what you're saying i think um compared to some of the other characters he um his development was like a little harder to follow i guess yeah um yeah i, I guess because i yeah compared to other characters he's not straightforward I, 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 I guess I liked him more rewatching since one, but I just felt like there was like unnecessary things we had to add to that character, um, but not in this season. I think I think I'm more complaining in season two. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know, but well, yeah. So I don't know. I I guess I had mixed feelings with Alfonso. Um, right. I don't know. I I thought initially like I guess. When I was watching, I was like, okay, he's like a stereotypical Latino person. And then when I got to 
five or well, when I get to the later episodes, I'll discover no, he's a French person. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, French mixed American. I don't know. I I just I I'm confused. Okay. Um, what characters uh, besides him? I I'll say I'll put him in more of like not like he has more most, kind of confusing, I guess. Yeah, I I just I I guess I don't care about his other like his family like, but then I care more about his his mom, I guess, and maybe I want more mm -hmm. of that in the, the later season, but whatever. Um, we think about Perry's mom. That's not her character. Like, yeah, I mean, she's an interesting character and you kind of feel bad for her and you kind of understand her but yeah she's she's definitely a frustrating character to me um she just she doesn't understand her daughter um yeah and she doesn't she it's like she adopted this this girl and kind of made her into the daughter that she wanted yeah rather yeah. than who she really is she was ultimately trying to help her, but, you know, suppressed a lot of the things that made her who she was um, when she is comes back after being in captivity. Um, there's a lot of tension in that relationship um, that kind of continues. And then you find out that she hid the letter from her husband yeah. um, from Abel, which is not great i mean uh, like why like so i mean you, you're trying to understand she, your husband oh sorry like, i know they explained they explain the reason why she did it is because um she thought it would upset him because um the oa talks about going to find her father so she thought it would upset abel because he's her adoptive father so basically make him think like oh am i not enough like but you know the obviously nina had a very strong connection with her father and she wanted to find him so yeah yes i i mean that that part when, when i saw it the first time and then we <laughs> watching it i was like oh <laughs> and that's another sorry just another great character is um nina's father Yes, um, I agree. Um, yeah, the Russian stuff are very interesting, and you know, it just adds like the grandiose of the show. You know, she's yeah. like another, you know, na nationality person from another nation, and then and, and it, they did a really good job with the culture of Russia, um, mm -hmm. and very well detailed. Um, yeah, he was a very interesting character. Um, oh well, I, another character is very interesting is the. Uh, uh, Kantun. Um, oh, Kantun, yeah. 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 Very interesting character. Um, yeah. Um, I, I kind of kind of said we don't get her season two. Yeah. And, right. Like, but I mean, well, but, I mean, of course, that's that. I mean, you can say like she's like a, a advisor of trying to take Perry to a, a direction, to a path she yeah. needs to go to. So. I mean, after that point, she's done. Um, yeah, what other characters we should mention? Oh, um, we should mention uh, Reza May character, the FBI. Um, Ellis, uh, the FBI trauma counselor. Um, mm, yeah. Because um, that's the thing I want to talk about theories, like him specifically. We can, we can talk about him specifically entering season two. Because yeah. he's the character I was, because how season two when you know, uh, just a minor spoiler for season two where he knows about the dimension hopping he knows what's going on mm -hmm. and you're thinking okay how yeah and we watching season one there is a setup that he probably knows it and he's not mm -hmm. letting it like i think what was it the scene in where well, you see perry in episode six or seven she does the you know that little Ball that goes to the maze, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How how she explains how she needs to go to this dimension, and she has that ball rolling down yeah. the thing. Catch. So he's playing like he doesn't get it, but obviously he kind of was in on it the whole time. Like, yeah, 
yeah and so that was where i was like okay maybe she actually knows it that may stand in the, in the ball falling out the tape almost falling out here but then he catches this and say stay in the board that's a direct like instant mystery yeah. of the viewer okay something is up not like big but like yeah. industry industry way um another one was the episode eight when he goes to perry's house which is interesting yeah why is he there Exactly. And so that makes more sense. And I was like, oh. But then he has something saying to um, Afonso, he's like, you did good. You did yeah, good. Yeah. Which indicates that he knows something. Yeah, like, or he, like, they, like, everyone did good in terms of the movements, maybe. Yeah. So we don't know about that. So he, and that's where, in terms of the future, that he could, pl- he could have played a bigger role. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then what else he, you know, um, yeah, but he never, he never, like, he, he was, like, the most straightforward, like, like, honest counselor you ever seen, where he didn't pressure on the questions of how, yeah. you know, Perry was, that's where you should have actually been kind of more questioned of, okay, he's not talking about that, but, like, it, it, it seems interesting. So he's another character that was very interesting in the show. Um, and then what else? Um, I'm trying to figure out what other, what other character that was in season one we should discuss. Mm-hmm. Do you have any saying about the father, Abel? And, um, oh, I mean, I think he's a great character and a good father to her. And, um, you know, he's definitely compared to the mother, more understanding and patient with that things are going to take time for her to yeah be yeah. open with them yeah and he 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 made a, a clear divide and and like like good plan to let's give her one hour to run to give a walk and she can go to the fbi counselor and yeah. she she was like okay i i can go with that so like he was already way away Perry trusted her, uh, trusted mm-hmm. him, and like you know, didn't push on the question and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, and you know, and obviously the scenes, you know, like like especially in episode seven when she has her uh, another her con contative uh, dream for episode eight. Mm-hmm. He's the one that's like you know, nature and uh, nature in her compared to the mom, where the mom. Yeah goes to get the tea, you know, it's like this shows how much he, you know, is very patient and, and smart. Yeah. yeah, so he's he's a great character. I, I like him. And that. Um, uh, Reds in peace. Um, okay. Uh, so, what else? What else we can talk about? Um, I guess we can go to best episodes. You want to do that? Yeah. So, favorite episodes? One second, though. Sure into just favorite episodes what's your favorite episode of this season oh i mean that's hard i i mean i love honestly the first episode's great um i mean that was what drew 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 me into the show the end the ending um and i think the beginning of the second episode with the continuation of her story um of nina's story um just, but particularly the, the end of the first episode um, with the the violin and the scenes of Russia, just beautiful um, filmography there. And um, as she's telling the story to the Crestwood Five. <laughs> um, so yeah. that's, I think really the, the first, I would kind of have to say the first episode, but the whole show. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of the show, you kind of like all the episodes. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, thank goodness these are not 23 or 20 episodes. Thank goodness yeah. they're eight, which is good. Um, I will say, um, I wanted to mention also that the titles of these episodes are very good. I like how they interrogate in the dialogue and stuff like that. I didn't notice that how chapter two is the new Colossus, and that's the actual scene in the Statue of Liberty, that was very cool, why they, they set that up. 
Uh, yeah. And then they always put the numbers behind the tiles. So New Colossus 2, what that means, chapter 2. So, so very neat way to tell you what episodes you're in. And then there's the tiles of the episodes. Um, I'll say chapter 2, um, 5, and then from 6 to 7 are my favorite episodes of these seasons. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that I pay attention to the most. Uh, yeah. I also put episode one as well. There, it's a good way to introduction to OA and everyone else. So episode one, two, uh, five through seven are the best episodes of this season. So, um, and you know, for character development and and the soundtrack and everything else that I met, we all mentioned before is very good in those episodes specifically, and specifically those characters. Uh, of the OA's original crew, but also the new crew. So, yeah. Um, yeah, um, I mean, but, you know, they're good episodes. I mean, they're very good. Um, any worse episodes, I guess, you know, very quickly? Uh, which one uh, you did not care about? It's not so much worse episodes, but the one fr- a little bit frustrating would sometimes be, sometimes there would be, and I don't know, I can't even remember which episodes it was, but there would be an episode where the whole thing would be kind of slow. And then like right at the end, they would jump into something really intense and then they'd leave it on a cliffhanger. Oh, yes. Like right after it gets, it's, it would be very slow. Then it would like pick up and you would be like drawn in and then the episode would end. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then you would just go to the next one. So it's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, episode, episode two is like that, right? Like Yeah, that, that might've been, that might have been one of them. I yeah, could be unfortunately, that. don't remember exactly which episodes it were, but I know that happened a couple of times throughout the show. Yeah, and then it happens with chapter uh, chapter five, Paradise, when you got already, um, I say Rainia, but also Homer and um, Perry mm. got back alive. Like it's such a big moment in chapter five. Yeah, and and then it like ends very quickly. And then chapter six you get into more of like the movements getting more discover and then setting up the room and stuff like that yeah yeah you know pace is always difficult to to tackle in these shows and try to be consistent throughout but you know it is necessary because you know they need to really discuss thoroughly um okay so let's kind of wrap up the stuff uh and uh let's get to kind of like the like i mean i should say what's the legacy of the show for season two but i i i guess we can say uh, how you rank like do you have other shows you like how you rank the show in general like i I mean this is this is one of my favorite shows um okay that i've seen in recent years hmm i mean i don't i don't watch a lot of shows i'm bad at sticking with things that are long which is another thing i appreciate about the show is it's pretty short um like it's only it's not any longer than it needs to be to tell a story um and i find that a lot of shows just kind of go on too long too long so i um did appreciate that um yeah so it's hard i mean it's up there for me yeah um for me um, I I prefer the more shorter seasons, uh, thirteen to eight episodes. Uh, yeah. I uh, oh, damn, I I think I didn't put this in. The, well, yeah, because I did a was a TV challenge in Facebook. Oh, really? Yeah, ten day challenge, and I didn't put this one because I didn't have a chance to rewatch the show, and uh, I I can put it um. I could put it as my number 11 favorite show. And then, or either 12. I, it's a toss up with that and Stranger Things. Because gotcha. these are the shows I watch on Netflix. Um, uh, but yeah, but it's up there with my other 10 favorite shows I see. Um, so, you know. Nice. Uh, yeah, so, and it's a very good show. And, uh, you know, it, you know, it's shortened. It's eight episodes, which is good because I can get through it. And, like, I could watch two episodes one day and then like that's how I did this rewatch just like I did with yeah. Stranger Things I did two episodes and one night and then 
next day two episodes you know get yeah well you know there's six or eight episodes um yeah and um i guess um you know uh discussing the Alexei of the show uh, you think the show like really grew in the first season like what do you think what the legacy of the the show is going to be and then entry in season two um like, what do you mean exactly? Um, I guess um, me also. I'll say I'll, I'll probably explain that more in, in season two. But like, do you think everyone likes season one? Like in general, do you think this season was a good way to properly like did it get the ball running? Like did it? Um, I guess draw people in enough to want yeah more. It. I mean, it. Yes and no. I mean, again, like I said earlier, it's definitely not for everyone. Um, but it gained an astonishing cult following. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, I would say it was pretty effective um, in um, garnering the support and admiration of the group of people that it was targeted at. I right. don't think its appeal is as widespread as I wish it was, but which has happened with other shows. That's how it goes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, fortunately, uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just, I mean, it, it definitely have a polarizing response. Um, yes. I'm looking at you know season one in general with the reviews, and some say it's the strongest and strangest Richard Pro- production since Stranger Things, which is interesting. But I mean, Stranger Things is like very easy to understand in general um and then when someone say like can you take this show serious well yes you can but it's up to you as a viewer if yeah you as I agreed you know like it's, some people won't but i think you absolutely can yeah um that's the thing but uh i, I think it's because you know they yeah. it, you know like you mentioned psychological development you're you're being tricked with your mind as well so yeah um yeah okay uh thank you becca for today's thank you um and uh, yeah thanks uh it, it was really great to get into a tv uh talk and, and thank goodness it was the oa i think i'm happy about mm-hmm. that uh, be watching it uh and uh you know what right, folks we're going to discuss uh season two um after the recording we stop we will discuss more about that and how to schedule that um yeah, and uh, yeah, and then no worry, we're gonna do more OA related content if possible. You know, obviously, we need to work our schedules. Uh, because I'm very curious to do a top 10 favorite episodes of the show and compare them, definitely. To, uh, you know, and I, I, I haven't made yet a, a top 10 episode of the OA, but after rewatching this and then going to season two, I'm curious to see mine and see yours how it's gonna be shaped so it's very interesting so and then we'll probably do a top favorite characters and and discuss that and so i'll, I'll come up some of the really contests so those are the ones i have in mind sounds and, good yeah so thanks becca and thank you everyone for listening to this podcast uh and of course check out the other two podcasts i have of course uh it was the first podcast with Jayden. We we're talking about batman forever chris's 20th anniversary but also to honor uh, Joel Schumacher, who unfortunately passed away the June 22nd uh, on Monday. And so it was really sad. I'm very happy that I discuss Batman Forever. It's not a bad movie as Batman Robin. Then second podcast was Robocop 2. Uh, it was for his dinner, uh, 30th anniversary, and that was with Will. Great discussion as well with that. And of course, Will is also coming back uh, with other related content, um, specifically the MCU. And we're going, our next one will be Iron Man 2. That's having yet been set yet so i need to discuss more of that with will uh and i guess the next podcast next podcast you probably see either me and becca or john of course john and i will discuss star wars uh all and we'll go from there so thank you everyone and have a good day